Today I'm going to show you five Y2K shapes and how to make them in Adobe Illustrator. What's going on everyone? My name is Tom from Dreadlabs and I'm a graphic designer and visual artist. This episode is the second episode of a series where I try to recreate Y2K style shapes. And we're going to do this in Adobe Illustrator. If you want to see part one first, you can check it out here or you can click on the link in the description. If you're more interested in rave related shapes, so shapes that you can put on rave flyers, I have four similar videos in that topic and I'll put those in the description as well. Without any further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so this is today's lineup of shapes and we're going to start from left to the right. Let's dive into number one. The first thing you want to do is draw out a circle with the ellipse tool and align that to the middle of your artboard. So make sure that Align to our board is selected and align it to the middle here. Next, we're going to grab the selection tool. We're going to click and drag our circle here. But before we do that, we're going to hold Alt or Option on our keyboard, which duplicates this circle. By now also holding Shift on your keyboard, you will also make sure that it will only move vertically. So you want to move it to about here. And now we want to scale this down. And again, if we hold Alt or Option, this will scale inwards to the middle point and it will also scale uniformly. And something like this is fine, maybe even smaller. Now we want to select both of our ellipses, go to Object, Blend, Make. And as you can see, this creates a blend between those circles, essentially creating ellipses that are becoming smaller and smaller the more we go upwards. Let's go to Object, Blend, Blend Options. And if we click on Specified Steps here, now we can enter a number and this will be the amount of ellipses between the ones that we already made. So as you can see, it's now four, which means that there are six shapes in total. Let's go with three. But as you can see, the spacing in between the ellipses isn't really working. So what we want to do is go to Object, Blend, Expand. Now, if we double click on one of the ellipses, we'll enter a group. Now it's just a matter of spacing these evenly. There are probably some shortcuts for this, but I prefer to do this by eye. All right, once you're finished, you can just double click anywhere. You want to select the group, press R on your keyboard or click on this button to access the rotate tool. I want to click once on the center of the bottom circle. You did it right if you can see a little sign anchor point coming over here. Now you want to hold Alt or Option on your keyboard and click again on the center of the bottom circle. And this will bring up the rotate menu. Now you can choose how many of these like arms you want to start to have. In our case, I think we had eight. So I'm going to just press 360 for 360 degrees slash 8. And this will automatically divide it. Now we're coming across an error here. As you can see, the two ellipses at the bottom here are overlapping. So we'll just press Ctrl or Command Z on our keyboard to undo our action. Double click on one of the ellipses to enter the group again. And I'm just going to scale these top four ones down a little bit. And space them out a little bit further. Now we'll just do everything over again. So we'll go to the rotate tool, click on the anchor point while holding all the option on our keyboard. And we're going to press 360 slash 8. You want to click on copy instead of OK, because this will make a copy of the arm of the star that we're going to make. And as you can see, they're now not overlapping. And if you want to do this once more, you can just simply press Ctrl or Command D on your keyboard. And this will repeat the last transform action that you just did. So press Command and Ctrl D. And there we have shape number one. All right, next up is this kind of space looking icon. And you want to start out again with an ellipse in the center of your artboard. It doesn't really matter how large it is, uh, but this will be the inner circle that you can see here. And I'm going to press Ctrl or Command C on our keyboard to copy it. And we're going to press Ctrl or Command F to paste it in place. As you can see, we now have a second circle. And we basically want to scale this up to an oval something like this and as you might have already guessed i'm holding alt or option on my keyboard to make sure that i'm scaling it from the center now i want to click on this button to switch the fill with the stroke so we can actually see what we're doing a little bit and again we want to copy this oval and paste it by pressing ctrl or command f let's scale this one up even more Something like this should be fine. Now you want to grab the inner one, go to the free transform tool, which is over here. You can also press E on your keyboard. And in the top middle here, you can just click and drag. And again, you want to hold Alder option to do this from the center onward. Something like this is fine. Now you want to select both of the ovals. So not the inner circle here. And you want to go to the pathfinder, which you can find under window pathfinder. And you want to click on minus back. Now, if we switch the stroke back to the fill, 
you can see that we have an outline with a little bit of perspective, if that makes sense. So our next steps will be a little bit messy, but what you wanna do is select this, grab the rotate tool, and when you click and drag and you hold shift, you will rotate it in increments of 45 degrees. So as you can see, this is now a perfect 45 degree rotation. You wanna select the oval, copy it and paste it in place again with command control C and command control F. You wanna grab the rotate tool once more. I wanna rotate this one 90 degrees so you can get a shape like this. And now we need to translate this from a fill to an outline shape. So we wanna select both of these, change the fill to the stroke again. You want to make the stroke larger, 20 or something like that. It depends on the size of your canvas. I'm using canvases of 1000 by 1000 pixels, by the way. Anyways, you want to now click on stroke and click on the align stroke button that aligns the stroke to the outside here. So it already looks kind of where we want it to be, but not yet. So you want to grab the one that's going to the top left here. This one is going to be sent to the back. So we want to erase these lines here. What you want to do is go to object, path, outline stroke now you want to select the other oval press command or control c command or control f once again then go to object path outline stroke as well and now you want to select both of these and then you want to go to the shape builder tool that's over here and now essentially what you want to do is hold, hold all or option on your keyboard and you know that you're doing it correctly when you can see the minus next to your cursor and basically you want to go through these lines here now you can see that it looks like our right ellipse here is on top of the other one now you want to select everything go back to the shape builder tool and rather than holding alter option you don't need to do that now and just click and drag here click and drag here click and drag here and then hold alter option on the circle which punches this one out and click and drag here and click and drag here and now once we click the way you can see that we finished the shape so it's a little bit finicky when it comes to knowing what you're doing but once you get the hang of the shape builder tool aligning them, the pathfinder, stuff like that. It's actually really easy to work with. On to the next one. So the next one here is an arrow. Uh, you can see this a lot in metal hard art. Same goes for the circle right here, but we'll get to that. Anyways, what you want to do here is grab the grid tool here. Go to the center of your artboard, hold all or option and then click. And this will bring up the rectangular grid tool options. So I'm going to go with a size of 800 by 800. And you want nine dividers in the horizontal and the vertical axis. You don't need to worry about these skew factors here. Just click OK. And I'm just going to make sure that on my stroke, I will have a white outline so we can kind of see what's going on here. Basically, we just made a grid. We're going to use the shape builder and this grid to create this arrow right here. So we're going to select our grid, press Ctrl or Command C, Ctrl or Command F on your keyboard to create a duplicate in the same place. And for this particular shape, I'm going to just go into outline view. You can access the outline view by pressing Ctrl or Command Y on your keyboard. And you can get out of it by pressing Ctrl or Command Y once again. It's just a little bit easier to see what you're doing in this way. Anyways, you want to go to the Rotate tool. Rotate the second grid 45 degrees like this. Then you want to grab the Selection tool. And I'm going to scale the grid up so that it's perfectly aligned with the anchor here in the end. Hold Alt or Option again once you're doing this. What I try to do usually is make it a little bit larger and zoom in and then scale it back down so that it aligns perfectly here. And as you can see, we now have a nice grid with diagonals and horizontals. Now you want to select both of these and under the Pathfinder menu, you want to just click on the divide button here. Now I'm just going to make sure that my previous shape here is locked. And with my group here selected, I'm going to grab the direct selection tool and trim off the excess shapes here. So I'm going to select everything that's outside the initial square that we created. And now we'll click delete. And we'll click delete again to delete the loose anchor points. And now we have this particular grid. Now once we select the grid, all you want to do is go to the shape builder tool and start building. So first we're going to just make the diagonal line of the arrow here by just drawing out with every triangle that we need. Next I'm going to do the horizontal part here like this and the vertical part here like that. And now we just want to delete the triangles that we don't need so we're going to hold alt or option on our keyboard and draw over all the unnecessary triangles that we made in the process. Now you want to enter the group by double clicking on the line and just click on the arrow that we just made 
and we're going to press Control or Command X on our keyboard to cut it out. Then we're going to double click anywhere to exit the group. And now we want to make a selection here. And you can see that there's a lot of anchor points that we don't need. And I'm just going to delete those. And now by pressing Ctrl or Command F on my keyboard, we just paste the clean arrow that we just made back in. I'm going to press Ctrl or Command Y to exit the outline view. And we're going to change the fill. And we're going to change the stroke to a fill. And there's that. So before we continue on to the next shape, I want to ask you something. Would you like to get access to all of these shapes that I made in this video without going through the hassle of following this tutorial? You actually can. On my Patreon channel, you can find all of the project files from all of my tutorials that you can just simply download and use in your own projects. I've been creating video tutorials for over three years now, and in that time, I made over 400 videos on my channel. You can imagine that doing that takes a lot of time. And I'm fortunate enough to do Dreadlabs full time, which makes me able to create these videos for you guys. And you can watch them for free on my YouTube channel. The thing is, however, in order to maintain doing that, especially in this time, I need to earn enough income to keep doing Dreadlabs full time. That's where my Patreons come in. Thanks to my supporters on Patreon, I am able to do Dreadlabs full time, ensuring that I can give you a free tutorial video every single week. As a thank you for becoming a patron, you'll get a lot of perks. For example, you'll get access to all of the project files from all of my tutorials like I mentioned, which at this point is over 100 Photoshop files and over 70 Illustrator files. I also own a website where I sell texture packs, vectors and much more. And all my Patreon members get a permanent 15% discount on that web store. They also get an exclusive role in the Dreadlabs Discord community server, which is a Discord server with over 3000 creatives and we talk about design, ask for feedback, ask and answer questions, and much more. There's also a slightly more expensive tier that also gives you access to exclusive tutorials, such as how to start your own clothing brand, how to design death metal logos from scratch, beginner tutorials for Adobe Illustrator, but also the project files from my Creatober series, meaning that you will get an additional 100 project files of posters and other stuff that I design. If you're interested in supporting Dreadlabs or get access to one of these perks, there's a link down in the description. Of course, I do understand that in this time, you might not have the budget to support Dreadlabs in that way. And of course, that's completely fine. You can also subscribe for one month and then unsubscribe immediately to get access to all of the files in one go. This does mean, however, that you won't get access to any future project files, only the ones that are available already at that point. If you don't have any budget at all, but you still want to support my channel or my cause, you can also leave a like and a comment on this video. Ever since you started doing that more often, my channel really started growing more and more again, so it actually does help. I would also consider subscribing and ringing that notification button because new tutorials are coming your way every week. Some of you might think that you're already subscribed, but you're not. Once again, I would like to give a huge shout out to all of my Patreon members. Thank you so much, because without you, there wouldn't be a Dreadlabs. Now, without any further ado, let's continue back into the video and start with shape number four. All right, we had a couple of quite interesting ones so far. This one is probably the most simple one to do on this video. Uh, so let's just dive into it straight away. You wanna grab the ellipse tool, go to the center of your artboard and draw out a perfect circle by holding Alt and Shift or Option if you're on a Mac. I am just going to the properties tab here and I'm gonna just check on the maintain width and height proportion. And I'm gonna make sure that my width is set to 350 precisely. Also, I'm going to switch my fill to my stroke and I'm going to change the stroke size to maybe 30. 30 should do the trick. All right, next I'm going to go to object path, offset path and an offset of 75 pixels in this case should do the trick. So we'll just click OK. And I'm going to repeat this two more times. So object path, offset path, 75 pixels. OK, and we'll do that one more time. All right, now I'm going to select all of the circles that we just made Go to object, path, add anchor points, and we'll do that one more time. And as you can see, we now have a lot of different anchor points. Now we want to grab the direct selection tool and just select a couple of these points and delete them where you don't want them to be. As you can see, by deleting them, you'll open up these circles here. And you can just create a pattern that you like. And also, of course, select multiple parts in one circle to separate them into two circles. And that's all there is to it. All right, for the final one, you're gonna need a script. I'll put a link to this script, which is called the Metaball script in the description down below, together with a video on how to install Illustrator scripts. It's actually fairly simple, so don't worry, it's not really intimidating and it's also free. So first, like many of the shapes that we already made, you wanna create a circle from the center. 
I'm gonna switch back from the stroke to the fill. And like the very first example, we're gonna click and drag by holding Alt and Shift. I wanna scale the center one down a little bit. Now you wanna select both circles, go to File, Scripts, Metaball, and check on Preview. And you want this a little bit thicker, so around 60 should do the trick. We'll click OK. And again, like the first example, we're gonna select everything that we made so far, go to the Rotate tool, hold Alt or Option on our keyboard, I'm clicking on the center of the middle circle. And this time we're going to press 360 divided by 6. And click on copy. And press Ctrl or Command D on our keyboard to repeat that same action once again. Until we have 6 arms. Now you want to select everything. Go to the Pathfinder and click on Unite. And you want to soften these hard edges in the middle here up. Let's zoom in. Grab the Direct Selection tool. We'll make a selection of the inner arms here. And we can just soften up that shape. And finally, we want to cut a hole in the very middle of this shape. And we're going to just create an ellipse. Make sure that it's aligned to the middle of our artboard. And we'll select both of our shapes and click on the minus front in the Pathfinder. And there you have it. So that's it guys, five Y2K shapes and how to make them. Like I said halfway through the video, if you want to get these shapes without going through the hassle of following this tutorial, you can get it on my Patreon channel. The link is down in the description. If you're interested in buying an asset pack similar to shapes like this, I would recommend getting the Ray Flyer Essentials by Dreadlabs, because that pack has over 80 shapes similar to these ones. Like I said, I have a couple of more illustrated tutorials similar to this one, so if you want to learn how to create more similar shapes like this, I'll put a link down in the description to this videos as well. Don't forget to leave a like, comment and a subscribe if you haven't already. And with all of that being said, this is Tom from Dreadlabs tuning out. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.